ومن احسن قولا ممن دعا الى الله who can be better than a person who calls towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, the period of Sahaba, the companions of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, uh, is uh, in the first century Hijri. Uh, after 70, 75 Hijri, there were few companions left in the world. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself died in 11 Hijri. And uh, Sahaba, they were transmitting the deen which they have received from the Prophet to the successors, to the Tabi'een, to the next generation. The last Sahabi is Abu Amir, uh, Abu Tufail, Amir bin Wathila radiallahu an, uh, uh, born in 3 Hijri and he died in 110 Hijri, 110 Hijri. And uh, today we shall talk about the, the different categories of Tabi'een. We are in chapter number 15 and uh, we are on the page number 289 of the book. There are different categories of successors. Some Tabi'een have narrated from the companions, some have met the companions and some have only seen the companions. So the first category, they are called Mukhdaram, Mukhdaram Tabi'in. So the successors who lived during the period of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but did not see him. For example, Uwais Al-Qarni from Yemen, martyred during the Battle of Siffin in 37 Hijri, al qama died in 62 Hijri, Masrukh died in 63 Hijri, Qadi Shuray died in 78 Hijri, and Abdurrahman bin Ghanam uh, Ashami died in 78 Hijri, are Mukhdaram, Mukhdaram Tabi'in, means they were living in the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi but they did not meet him, they did not see him. Now, the second category of Tabi'in are, they, they are Kibar Tabi'in. Kibar, they are called great successors. For example, Sa'id bin al Musayyab died in 94 Hijri. Urwa bin Zubair also died in 94 Hijri, uh, son of Asma bin Abi Bakr. And Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, grandson of. Uh, uh, Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the first Caliph of Islam, uh, and Ibrahim al Naqai in Kufa died in 96 Hijri. Now, you see, uh, and they have seen a lot of Sahaba. They are the senior most Kibar Tabi'in Sayyid bin Musayyib, and Urwa bin Zubair, and Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, Ibrahim al Naqai, and so on. Now we talk about the average uh, successors, you know, at Tabi'in uh, from the middle uh, age. They are the middle class of Tabi'in successors who died after 100 Hijri. For example, Imam Hassan Basri uh, died in 110 Hijri, and Imam Muhammad bin Sirin also died in the same year in Basra. So uh, after them, uh, the people who narrated from the great successors, for example, Imam Qatada and Imam Zuhri, they are also Tabi'in, they met the Sahaba, but 
they also narrate from the Tabi'een. For example, Qatada died in 118 Hijri and Muhammad bin Shihab al Zuhri, Imam Zuhri, died in 124 Hijri. And then comes uh, the minor successors, the Sigar Tabi'een, they call it Sigar Tabi'een. These are the Tabi'een who lived long and narrated from the younger companions. They saw one or two companions, but their listening of hadith from them is not established. For example, Amash and Imam Abu Hanifa. Amash died in 147 Hijri. And Imam Abu Hanifa died in 150 Hijri. Imam Abu Hanifa saw Anas bin Malik but uh, he did not narrate them from, uh, from, the, from the Sahaba. So we said earlier the Tabi'in are of three degrees. Those who met the Sahaba and listened the Hadith from Sahaba and uh, those who narrated from them and the third one those who uh, have seen the Sahaba, but they did not meet them, they did not narrate the Hadith from them. Now, as I said, very few Sahaba existed after 70 Hijri. Similarly, very few successors, Tabi'in, uh, are found after 130 Hijri. Most of them are the successors who have only seen some companions, some Sahaba. So uh, it is said that the last Tabi'i was uh, Khalaf bin Khalifa died in 181 Hijri. The last one who met any, any Sahabi, any companion. So these are the, the different uh, 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 categories of the Tabi'in successors. We are in chapter 15 of the book, Significance and Classification of Hadith. So uh, this chapter talks about the narrators in different uh, centuries and uh, the narrators from the Sahaba and Tabi'in and Taba Tabi'in. Today we are going to talk about different categories of students of successors. They are called Taba'a Tabi'in. Uh, and uh, they are classified into, uh, into many uh, categories. For example, uh, the first one are called Kibar Taba'a Tabi'in. Uh, great students of Tabi'in, successors. This category includes those venerable people who died after 160 Hijri. For example, uh, they include, you know, around that period, uh, Imam Shu'bah bin Hajjaj who died in 160. And Imam Awza'i from Syria, he died in 157 Hijri. And if he, Imam Sufyan Thawri, the great narrator of Hadith and the great Faqih jurist, died in 161 Hijri. And uh, Imam Laith bin Shad, the famous jurist, died in 175 Hijri. And his contemporary, Imam Malik, Imam, Imam Malik bin Anas died in 179 Hijri in Medina. So they are the great uh, Taba'a Tabi. Now after them uh, are the average students of successors. Uh, the category includes those venerable people who died after 180 Hijri. For example, Ismail bin Ulayya died in 193 Hijri and Sufyan bin Uyayna died in 198 Hijri. And the last category of uh, 
the Tabah Tabi'in, they include those venerable people who died after 200 Hijri. For example, Imam Shafi'i died in 204 Hijri. He's a Tabah Tabi. Imam uh, Abu Dawood, a theology, di also died in 204 Hijri. And uh, Imam Zaid bin Harun died in 206 Hijri. And uh, Imam Abdul Razak as sanani from Yemen died in 211 Hijri. So these are the Taba uh, Tabi'in. So you can imagine the, the time, the era of Taba Tabi'in is uh, uh, up to uh, 200 or 220 Hijri. So these are the three generations uh, 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 mentioned in the Hadith. The, the Sahaba and the Tabi'in and Taba'a Tabi'in. The Sahaba students of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the students of Sahaba are called Tabi'in and the students of Tabi'in are called Taba'a Tabi'in. Today we are going to talk about the the Mahaddisin of 12th century Hijri and among them uh, from the Indian subcontinent Shah Waliullah Mahaddis Dehlawi died in 1176 Hijri 1176 Hijri and 1762 uh, Christian era Imam Waliullah is a thinker, revivalist, and muhaddis, commentator of Quran, expert in Islamic law, and independent jurist, mujtahid. He was the son of Shah Abdul Rahim. And this was the period of decline of the Mughal Empire in India. He performed Hajj twice and wrote Al Musawwah the Arabic con con commentary of Muatta and Al Musaffa, the Persian commentary of Muatta Imam Malik. Tafhimat Ilahiya and Hujjatullah al Baligha are his famous books. On his return from Hajj, he gave special attention to the science of Hadith. He did independent interpretation of Islamic law. He freed the Muslim thought from the shackles of blind following of the four Imams. In some issues he preferred the Hanbalites and in some issues he preferred the Malikites but in most of the issues he agreed with the Shafi'i opinion. In his article Dr. Mazhar Biqai has proved in the light of facts and figures that most of his juristic verdicts are in accordance with the Shafi'i jurisprudence. Look carefully at the chart given on the next page, the chain of narration and teaching of Hadith in the Indian subcontinent goes to Imam Shah Waliullah al-Dahalabi. All four of his sons were great religious scholars. His grandson Shah Ismail was a great scholar and mujahid. His grandson Shah Ishaq is a very important link in teaching and narration of hadith. Both the scholars of uh, Deoband uh, school of thought in India and the scholars of Ahlul Hadith in the Indian subcontinent continent are attached to Shah Ishaq as far as the transmission of Hadith is concerned. The Hanafi scholars belonging to Deoband, the school of thought, are connected with the line through Maulana Mamluk Ali and Shah Abdul Ghani Mujaddidi while the religious scholars of Ahlul Hadith school of thought are also connected with the same line through Maulana Sayyid Nazir Hussain Bihari. 
Imam Sayyid Abu Ala Al Maududi is also attached with the same line through the links of Maulana Ashfaqur Rahman Khan Dhalvi, Maulana Khalil Ahmad Saharanpuri, and Maulana Mazhar Nanothvi. Now look at this chart on page 335. 335. Shah Waliullah uh, died in 1176. And his son, Shah Abdul Aziz, died in uh, 1239 Hijri. And look at the students of Shah Ab well, uh, Abdul Aziz. Sanaullah Panipati, who wrote the tafsir, Shah Ismail Shaheed, martyred in 1831 CE, Shah Isaq, and uh, uh, Abdul Hay. Uh, Badhanvi and Mufti Sadruddin Azurda and uh, so on and the famous student of uh, uh, Shah Ishaq who was the grandson of Shah Waliullah uh, was Sayyid Nazir Hussain Bihari Summa Dehalvi died in 1320 Hijri and uh, he was teaching all the books of hadith in Delhi he had more than 1,000 students among them or uh, uh, Imam uh, Ahmad Hassan al-Mufassir Sanaullah Amritsari and Abdul Mannan Wazir Abadi and uh, uh, Maulana Lakwi and Jabbar Ghaznavi and uh, and many, many people like uh, Haider Hassan Tonki and Abdul Jabbar Omar Puri, Abdul Rahman Mubarak Puri, and uh, great scholars uh, from the Ahlul Hadith school of thought. The, the chain of Hadith tra transmission goes to uh, Shah Ulubullah Mahadis Ad Dehli. Look at the chart on page 336 how the Deoband scholars and the chain of narration emanating from uh, Shah Waliullah al-Muhaddish died in 1176 Hijri. And his son was Shah Abdul Aziz, died in 1239 Hijri. And from Shah Ishaq, uh, the chain goes to Fazlur Rahman Ganj Muradabadi, Shah Abdul Ghani Mujaddidi, and Sheikh Mamluk Ali. And uh, the student of Shah Abdul Ghani Mujaddidi is Qasim Nanutwi, who was the founder of Deoband University. And you see, uh, Sheikh Mamluk Ali had his students, uh, Mazhar Nanutwi and Yaqub Nanutwi, and their students are Ashraf Ali Thanvi and Khalil Ahmad Saharanpuri. And from there, you find. Uh, uh, the link of Sheikh Abu Ala Al Maududi uh, died in 1399 uh, Hijri, about uh, 40 years ago. And you see from uh, the founder of Deoband, Maulana Nanutvi, you find the students uh, Rashid Ahmad Gangohi and Sheikh Mahmoodul Hassan and Anwar Shah Kashmiri, the famous Mahadis of India, and Shabir Ahmad Usmani, and so on. Uh, this is the, the chain of Shah Waliullah al muhaddis al dahlwi Now let's uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, Muhammad bin Ismail as sanani is a famous Mahadis, and he uh, is the compiler of Subul salam which is the commentary of Bulughul Maram. So this book became very f uh, famous by uh, Amir San'ani. He was from Yemen. And uh, Bulughul Maram is the book of Ibn Hajar Asqalani and uh, the commentary of uh, Subul salam is very famous uh, among the among the scholars. The scholars of 13th century Hijri. We are on page 337 uh, of chapter 15 from the book 
essence, uh, significance, and classification of hadith. Shaykh al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Najdi is a famous uh, scholar from the Arabian Peninsula and uh, he died in uh, 1206 Hijri, 13th century. And Kitab al Tawheed is his famous book. He played a great role in purifying the Arab land from idolatry and innovations and establishing an Islamic government. He belongs to a uh, Hanbalite school of thought and he's greatly influenced by Shaykh al Islam, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. The Ministry of Religious Affairs of Saudi Arabia presently has re remained in the hands of individuals belonging to the family of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab and they are called uh, Al Al Sheikh. And uh, some uh, of the 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 other scholars of hadith from this century, son of Shah Abdul uh, Waliullah Shah Abdul Aziz is a famous commentator of the Holy Quran and uh, he was the Grand Mufti of India and all the chains of narration of hadith in India reached to him. Grandson of Shah Walullah, Shah Ismail Shaheed was martyred in 1831 Hijri. He is the author of many other books beside Taqwiyatul Iman. He was martyred at the age of 47 fighting against six in Balakot, Pakistan presently in Pakistan he used to give sermon on every Friday standing on the stage of the principal mosque in Delhi he played an important role in reviving the creed of unity of God among the Muslims of Indian subcontinent correcting them their beliefs and creating an atmosphere of jihad among the Muslim society. Taqwiyatul Iman, Sirat Mustaqeem, and Mansab Imamah, and Al Risala fi Usulul Fiqh, and Tanvirul Aynain fi Ithbat Raful Yadain are his famous books. The family of uh, Shavalullah in India got divided in two parts after Shah Ismail. Shah Abdul Aziz and others remained firm on a Hanafi school of thought. They are the predecessors of religious school of Deoband, the school of thought. While Shah Ismail and his followers are the predecessors of scholars of Ahlul Hadith school of thought in the Indian subcontinent. Now, uh, when we talk about the, the scholars of Hadith from the 13th century, we must mention about uh, Imam Muhammad bin Ali al-Shawkani, the, the great Qadi of Yemen. He is a Muhaddith and is a commentator of Quran and the author of Nailul Awthar, which is an important book on the uh, Fiqh al Hadith. He was from uh, Yemen. He was the Qadi of Yemen. And uh, uh, then we, we shall talk about the Mahaddisin of uh, 14th century. You see, the most important. Uh, 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 among them are Siddiq Hasan Khan Khannoji. Khannoji died in 1307 Hijri. Siddiq Hasan Khan Khannoji is the author of many books. He wrote the commentary of Bulughul Maram. He is the student of great teachers like Mufti Sadruddin Azurda and Sheikh Hussein bin Mohsin Ansari. He has written more than 200 books in Arabic, Urdu, and Persian languages. Following are his famous books, Miskul Khitam, Commentary of Bulughul Maram in Persian, 
and Fathul Alam commentary of Bulughul Maram in Arabic and as sirajul Wahaj commentary of uh, Mukhtasar Sahih Muslim uh, by Munziri and uh, uh, the famous scholar of India uh, who taught more than 1,000 people uh, all the books of Hadith. We should mention the name of uh, uh, Imam Nazir Hussain Muhaddish <coughs> Bihari and then Del uh, from Delhi uh, died in 1320 Hijri. Mia Nazir Hussain is famous by the name of Shaykh al Kul. He became the successor of Shah Isaq in Delhi. So Abdurrahman Mubarak Puri and uh, Ab Abdul Mannan Wazir Abadi, Deputy Nazir Ahmed, Abdul Jabbar Umar Puri, Shamsul Haq Asim Abadi, Haider Hassan Tonki, Sanaullah Amritsari are among his famous students. He gave lectures on hadith for 60 years and he got the title of Shaykhul Kul, teacher of all. The number of his students uh, is more than 1,000. And uh, we should talk about uh, uh, Shaykh Muhammad Ashraf Azimabadi, died in 1322, and he's the great muhaddis of Bihar. He assisted in the compilation of Aunul Ma'bud, which is the commentary of Sunan Abi Dawud. Very popular uh, commentary of Abu Dawud, Aunul Ma'bud. Sheikh uh, Hussein bin Mohsin Ansari Al Khazraji. He was uh, uh, from Yemen, but he came to India, Bhopal. Uh, his students include the famous scholars like Siddi Hassan Khan Kannoji and Shamsul Haq Diyanvi Azimabadi and Abdul Hay Laknavi. Sheikh Hussein is the student of Imam Shaukani, the author of Nailul Autar through one link. It is said that he had almost memorized the 13 big volumes of Fathul Bari. A great muhaddis, Hussein bin Mohsin al Ansari al Khazraji from Yemen, who came to India and taught hadith, memorized uh, all volumes of the commentary of Sahih Bukhari by Ibn Hajar Asqalani. So, what a great uh, Imam, Sheikh Mohsin uh, al Ansari. Now, we talk about Sheikh. Uh, uh, Shamsul Haq Diyanvi Azimabadi died in 1329 Hijri and he is a great Mahadis also from India, Bihar, following are his famous books. Ghayathul Maqsud Fi Hal Sunan Abi Dawud, Aunul Mabud, the commentary of Sunan Abi Dawud, and At Taliq Al Mughni Ala Sunan. Uh, Sheikh Jamaluddin Qasimi is a Mahaddish, uh, uh, died in 1332 Hijri. He wrote the important book on the terminology of Hadith by the name Qawaidu Tahdith. Qawaidu Tahdith. And uh, uh, we should talk about. Uh, Sheikh Khalil Ahmad Saharanpuri died in 1269 Hijri and uh, he wrote the commentary uh, by name Bathlul Majhud, commentary of Sunan Abi Dawood. And, uh, and uh, the great Mahadesh of India, uh, Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri, Anwar Shah Kashmiri, his students of Shaykh al Hind Maulana Mahmud al Hassan, he taught hadith in Darul Ulum Deuband and Tabil, India. Faidul Bari is the commentary of Bukhari, uh, is his famous book. The number of his students exceed also 1,000. Uh, great Muhaddisin and scholars like Mufti Shafi and uh, 
شیخ ادریس کاندھلوی منظور نعمانی یوسف بن نوری حبیب الرحمن آسمی اور امام ہیس اسٹوڈنٹس انور شاہ کشمیری ناو وی شل ٹاک اباؤٹ شیخ عبد الرحمن مبارک پوری ہو ڈائیڈ ایئر آفٹر کشمیری ڈائیڈ ان ون تری فائیو تری ہجری ہی از اے فیمس محدث آف مبارک پور انڈیا which produced many great men. He's a student of Sheikh Hussain bin Mahsin Ansari and uh, Mia Nazir Hussain and Abdul Salam Mubarak Puri and Ubaidullah Rahmani and Sheikh Taqiuddin Hilali have benefited from him. Tuhfatul Ahwazi, the famous commentary of Tirmidhi and Shifaul Ghalil the commentary of Kitab al-Ilal Lithirmizi or his uh, famous books. And uh, in 1362 Hijri, the great scholar of India, Ashraf Ali Thanvi, died. Very famous uh, in India. And uh, we shall talk about uh, Shaykh Shabir Ahmad Uthmani, Uh, uh, who played an important role in the establishment of Pakistan uh, died uh, two years after uh, Pakistan is made in 1368 Hijri. And then we talk about Sheikh uh, uh, Sayyid Abul Ala Al Maududi uh, born in 1903 Hijri 1903 uh, CE and died in 1979 Hijri and uh, that is the end of 14th century Hijri. He died in 1399 Hijri. Imam Maududi is the founder of uh, Jamaat Islami. He assembled the scholars of different schools of thought for the implementation of Islamic law. He is a Mufassir, Mutakallim, Mujtahid, and Muballigh who confronted the mischiefs and trials of nationalism, Qadianism, and denials of Hadith very bravely. He played a significant role in bringing out the Muslims from the domination of Western knowledge and civilization. Tafhim al-Quran is the commentary written by Imam Maududi Al-Jihad fil Islam and the four uh, concepts uh, of Quran, Tanqihat, uh, Qadiani, Mas'ala, and uh, 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 some other books are very famous. He wrote Islam ka Mu'ash, Islam ki Mu'ashi Talima, Economic Teachings of Islam, and he wrote the famous book, The Issue of ownership of land to refute communism and uh, uh, the veil and interest are his famous books against the capitalistic civilization of uh, the 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 west uh, today we shall talk about uh, the great uh, uh, tra traditionalists of uh, our century, 15th century Hijri. We, we shall talk about uh, uh, two scholars. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin Albani died in 1420 Hijri. Uh, and uh, we shall talk about Zia al Ajmi, who died uh, recently, uh, last year, uh, in Medina, uh, who wrote the famous book. Al-Jame Al-Kamil, Al-Jame Al-Kamil, and uh, uh, which has all Sahih Ahadith from all the books of Ahadith, more than 150 books of Ahadith. He made one Al-Jame Al-Kamil fil Hadith Sahih Al-Shamil, Diya Ar-Rahman Al-Azmi, and uh, died in 1414. Uh, for two Hijri. So first of all, uh, let me speak about Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin Albani. Uh, he wrote uh, 
and uh, compiled the the books of silsila salas uh, silsilatul ahadith as sahiha and silsilatul ahadith ad daifa wa ghayruhuma and uh, you know, he collected all the sound ahadith uh, in different volumes and in all weak and fabricated ahadith uh, in uh, in uh, different volumes Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin Albani is the great muhaddis of our age perhaps a great personality like him has not been born after Hafiz Ibn Hajar Asqalani who died in 852 in the world of science of hadith Sheikh Albani has made deduction of traditions on beliefs Sufism the four juristic schools of thought and the traditions existing in all the books of Sunan Arba. He has determined the position of traditions that are presented as a proof in every branch of knowledge. The task which was not possible for many institutions, Allah has taken from one man. One of his early memorable works is the deduction of traditions found in the famous book of Imam Ghazali named Ihya ul -Uloom. Albani has divided the four sound books of Hadith into sound and weak and published them separately as Sahih Nasai and Da'if Nasai. Sahih Tirmidhi and Da'if Tirmidhi. Sahih Abi Da'ud and Da'if Abu Da'ud and Sahih ibn Majah and Da'if ibn Majah. He has also divided into sound and weak the important book of Imam uh, Abdul Azim Mundiri, namely At-Targhib wa Tarheeb, which is used for the merits of deeds. He also determined the status of traditions uh, of the famous book of Hadith, collection of Hadith, Mishkatul Masabih. Likewise, he has deducted the traditions used in Fiqh Sunnah, uh, written by Sheikh Sayyid Sabiq, uh, which is very popular in the Arab world. Fiqh Sunnah by Sheikh Sayyid Sabiq. He deducted the Ahadith from this book. And also, uh, Al Halal Wal Haram Fil Islam by Sheikh Yusuf Al Qardawi the most popular books of jurisprudence in the Arab world. The examination and evaluation of traditions has become very easy for the students and research scholars of Hadith now. The entire work done in the field of Hadith is being transferred uh, on IT. So uh, you must uh, uh, know the fact uh, that uh, 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 Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin Albani was very lucky that during his time the computer was invented and uh, it was very easy to put all his research on the computer and it is very easy now to sort out the different narrators and uh, to compile these books and uh, the information about narrations, about narrators and about the ikhtilaf of the mutun and ikhtilaf of asnad uh, is on our finger trips. It is on our finger trips. We can easily make our research. And uh, then this work of Sheikh uh, Dia uh, Rahman al Azimi came uh, in uh, 19 volumes, uh, uh, Al Jami al Kamil. He collected 16,500 Sahih Ahadith from all the, the books of Ahadith. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa